You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. I love what Pastor Steve told us. It's the praise is his already. We ain't giving him nothing. Hallelujah. He's doing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I give him honor and honor to my bishop, Pastor LaShawn, the Amoses, my mother and my father in the gospel, my mentors, amen. They put up with me. And, and truth be told, Pastor Steve too, because I always got a question for him. <laughs> amen, and they always have an answer for me in the word, amen. Just thank you for my Shiloh family. I love you guys. Uh, Y'all praying for me this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm going to need those prayers this morning. And we'll go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for on this day, this Palm Sunday, Lord, that you made your triumphant entry into Jerusalem, God. We praise you and we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that we are some people that you even thought about, God. Who are we, Lord, that you are mindful of us, God? We thank you, God, for the sacrifice that you came to make, God. Today we're talking about sacrifices, but you are the ultimate sacrifice. We ask you, God, forgive us, God, for the things that we have said or done that was not like you, God. Cleanse us, God, and we shall be clean, God. We thank you, Lord, for your word that you left as a map for our lives to go by and that we can be washed by the washing of the water of your word today, God. Hallelujah. I ask, Lord, that you speak, God. Hallelujah. I got all these notes, and as usual, God, if you want to change anything, Holy Spirit, I will obey. Lord, I thank you, God, that you will give the help that the people need today, each and every individual, you know what they need, God. You know, Lord. Speak something to their hearts today, God, to change their lives, God, or to comfort them, I pray in the name of Jesus, as you always do, Holy Spirit. Just thank you and praise you, magnify, glorify your name today. Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Amen, so again, we're on the topic of sacrifice. And Pastor Steve started, he's a preaching machine, by the way. He <laughs> started us out this month with sweet smelling sacrifice of faithful fasting. Then Bishop came to us with the covenant of sacrifice. And last week I was out of town preaching at my dad's church and I saw on YouTube where Pastor Jacqueline tore the house down <laughs> with a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. And today we are going to speak to you about are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice? I'm coming out of the NLT, New Living Translation, and some of the King James Version. So the word sacrifice means to give up something that is valuable to you, something you love and cherish. As Christians, we should be living a life that is pleasing to him by totally surrendering ourselves to him as a living sacrifice instead of pleasing our flesh. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let me say it a few different ways. It means that now we take our free will and it is his free will for our lives. We no longer do what our flesh wants. Our flesh has been crucified with Christ and is under subjection to the will of God the Holy Spirit. You know, what I mean, subject to God the Holy Spirit when we're tempted and challenged. We're going to be tempted and challenged in life. And I was thinking about the testimony of our brother Q, who hadn't done anything and somebody spit on him. 
Now, <laughs> I, I can truly say I don't know how I would have reacted, but I know how I would have wanted to react. And that's how he did. He passed the test. He sacrificed by not reacting the way that the devil wanted him. He didn't, he didn't step on that trap that Bishop was talking about that was laid for him. I applaud you, brother, but pray for me, okay? <laughs> but Colossians 3 and 3 says, for we are dead and our life is hid in Christ and God which means we no longer live a sinful life, but we are now empowered by the Holy Spirit to live holy lives, and we restrain ourselves from those temptations. And this is just what our brother did because he didn't allow the devil to get the victory. He didn't react the way the devil wanted him to, but he hid himself in Christ. And it was a sacrifice to obey God the Holy Spirit and hold up the name of Christ so that that person could see Christ in him instead of him knocking him out, which I don't know if I would have not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying, as Linda said, I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm, all jokes aside, we all will be tried and tempted one way or another. And so the scripture tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and this is NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that we will find acceptable that is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you in a new person by changing the way you think. And Bishop says, we come to church to learn how to think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And again, our brother Q said he was from the streets. And anybody who knows anything about the streets knows people in the streets think this kind of reaction was weak. But it is just the opposite. It takes the power of God, the Holy Spirit, not to allow our flesh to strike back after somebody spits on you. I feel that is one of the most nasty and disgusting things that you can do to a person. It would have been easier for him to step back into his old ways. But the fruit of his reaction showed the change that he allowed Christ to make in his life by changing the way he thought and not knocking that person out. And guess what? God received the glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God received the glory. We're talking about sacrificing when it's easier to give in to our flesh. What a befitting thing for this month. For in this season of the year, today being Palm Sunday, was when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And as I was thinking about what happened at that end of that week, Jesus could have chosen to call legions of angels to destroy his enemies. But he didn't. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Because if he did that, we wouldn't be here. Amen. So Jesus' entry was fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, upon a call the fowl of an ass. And it was one that no one had ever sat on. Hallelujah. Matthew 21 and 9 says, The multitudes then went before, and the, those that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! To the highest, yes. Hosanna. They said this in great honor to Jesus as he entered the city because some of them knew that he was a king. 
but they didn't really know what kind of king he was and where his kingdom was. Some of them didn't know who he was at all. They said, who is this? But the Jewish leaders knew what this symbolized. Triumphant entry, meaning he has won the battle. He is victorious, the undefeated king. And in that day and time when the king and the armies returned home after they had defeated their enemies, the people lined the entry of the city on the streets and they waved their banners and shouted and praised them for saving them from their enemies. Hallelujah. Jesus is our salvation. Kind of like today when people line up in the crowd when they hear that a dignitary or the president is coming thinking he's going to make changes in their favor. So they come to get a glance at him and pay homage, wave their banners, cry out, shout his name, welcome to our city, as they did Jesus in that day saying, Hosanna, the son of God, son of David, blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. But little did they know when Jesus entered Jerusalem that day, he didn't come to establish our earthly kingdom, but the spiritual kingdom and them, which they didn't understand. When he entered, he went into his father's house, the house of prayer, the temple, and cleaned it out by turning over the merchandise tables and the money tables and whipping them out as he said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Yes. But you have made it a den of thieves. This showed his authority as king. Can you imagine Jesus coming back today and entering into some of these so-called houses of God? And he will be coming one day soon. And there will be some serious cleaning out going on. He's furious with how the churches are conforming to the ways of the world. Pastors merchandising themselves out to the highest bidder, doing whatever pleases the people as long as they get paid condoning same-sex marriages, people living together, drinking, etc., etc., sin, 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 and pastors wanting to grow marijuana on the church property for a profit to sell it. And everything that the world does, as long as it's gonna get them paid. And having the nerve to call themselves Christians, which is supposed to mean Christ-like, which they are far from. Second Corinthians 6 and 17 tells us, therefore come out from among them, them being the unbelievers. Separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. Where is the sacrifice today? Where is the sacrifice? Remember Romans 12 and 1 said, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let there be a living, holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. And this is truly the way to worship him. God is merciful and long-suffering and he's giving them a chance to repent, but he won't keep his anger forever according to Psalms 103.89. I myself did not have a correct understanding of the Lord for a long time in the church. I heard the parts of the word that I wanted to, got an emotional high, danced all over the place, and lived however I wanted to live, thinking I was going to ride into heaven on my mom and dad's coattail because of what Psalms 103 and 8 says, that the Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and plenteous and mercy. So I thought, I just need to come to church, give me praise, go home, try to be good and we all go to heaven. How many of you know there is a difference in praising him versus worshiping and sacrificing him in spirit and in truth, true worship. But I didn't want to sacrifice and give up the way I was living to please God. I thought I was enjoying my sin. I thought God would ignore all of these things because he's a loving God, remember? And we're under grace. 
You hear so many people, oh, we're under grace. We do whatever, no, no, no. Acts 17 and 30 in the NLT says plainly that God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now, now, he commands everyone, everywhere, to repent of their sins and turn to him. So listen, there can't be any true worship without sacrifice. I'm gonna say that again. There can't be any true worship without sacrifice. And these people <clears throat> in this setting wanted the same thing. They wanted Jesus to please them by setting up a kingdom here on earth in a physical building to satisfy them. And then they wanted to give him their leftover sacrifices as some of us and keep living the way that they were living. Jesus did, did, he did come to deliver them, but not just from the bondage of the Romans, but from the hands of all demonic forces of the devil. But they didn't understand the bigger picture. God had delivered them from Egypt and countless other enemies over and over. Then after a little while, they forgot all about it. They forgot about sacrificing their lives to him. He told them in Deuteronomy 6 and 10, and it shall be, well, 10 through 13, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swore unto the fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give thee greatly and godly cities, which thou buildest not, houses full of good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. And when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and, swear, and shall swear by his name. And you know, with some people, you know when payday is, you know when tax time is, they forget all about God, and all of a sudden they have those demonic schedules that Bishop was talking about. And don't let them acquire a large sum of money, you won't see them until the money runs out. Where is the sacrifice? These people didn't want to wait on the Lord's plan. They wanted immediate gratification and revenge towards the Romans, just as some of us do today, we have a microwave culture. You know that commercial, J.D., was it J.D. Wentworth? I, it's my money and I want it now! I want it now! We want everything now! We don't want to wait on the Lord. So when Jesus didn't do what they wanted him to do, some of the same people a few days later shouted, crucify him, crucify him! They preferred Pilate to release the criminal Barabbas instead of Jesus, as was customary to pardon one person before the feast of the Passover. And at the time of his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, some were, they were just all hyped up from the feast and didn't really mean anything that they said. They were just going along with the crowd. And now that the crowd's mood had changed in the fear of the religious leaders and not wanting to be associated with Jesus, the leaders didn't want to be associated with. They were afraid of losing their positions. I am um, bishop, apostle, sword, and so. Yes, look at my robe. I have the authority over you. They didn't want to lose that in their money. So, you know, they didn't want to rock the boat because they had a somewhat of an agreement what they thought would bring them some kind of peace, so-called peace with the Romans. And they didn't, they didn't want to rock the boat on that. They wanted things to go the same way that they were going. So they quickly made it known that they weren't with Jesus. They wanted Jesus to stop the people from praising. It made them so angry. But Jesus said it to them in Matthew 21 and 16, hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfect praise. And then he dropped the mic and left them. No, he didn't. That was just some of my humor. 
but he went out of the city into Bethany and, he, and lodged there. He wasn't thinking about the enemy wanting to stop the praises and neither should we. Nowadays they want us to be quiet about Jesus and about the sacrifice that he has given and made for the world. But as a poem that I have, that I read all the time says, we shouldn't shut up, let up, give up until we have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, praised up, preached up for the cause of Christ. We need to go till he comes, give till we drop, preach till all we know, hallelujah, and work till he stops us. The religious leaders didn't really sacrifice anything to the God that they said that they knew and served. It was all about them. All about them. Does it sound familiar? Churches today preaching a new gospel. You can live however you want to, whatever is right for you, and still make it into heaven. There are many paths to heaven. And there is no hell, or if they believe it's hell, the loving, kind God will not send us there. And no, he won't, but you will, by not sacrificing your life to him, by going against his word. It's your choice. Your choices that you make determine the destiny. Your destiny. You choose your destiny. Weren't the religious readers, uh, leaders like people today? They were just like people today. Some of the people, they love you, love you, as long as you satisfy their wants and needs and everything's going their way. But as soon as you're not, you're no longer of any service to them, then they throw you away like trash. Be careful if you find yourself needing and accepting the praises and plaudits of men needing to be recognized and rewarded, regarded by them. For Jeremiah 17.5 says, curse is the one who trusts in man. I told y'all that last time I preached. Who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. But rather our attitude should be as Philippians 2.5 and 8 says, let this mind be in you. It's also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. We're always trying to make a reputation for ourselves. But he took upon him the form of a servant. See, we got it twisted nowadays. We are here to serve, but people think that the people should serve them. The leaders think people should serve them. They got it twisted, turned around backwards, just like the devil is. We didn't come here to be served. Jesus didn't come to be served. He made himself as a form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as men, something that we don't ever want to do is humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He made the ultimate sacrifice. Where is our sacrifice today? Where is our sacrifice? And let's make it clear about Jesus and when his life was sacrificed on the cross. He said in John 10 and 18, no man, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. And I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. And this commandment have I received of my father. You see, God wants us to willingly, willingly sacrifice everything to him. 24 through 27, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. As it, you are dead and no, no longer means anything as to what your flesh wants. You're dead. So you have to deny yourself, crucify that old man every day. Take up your cross, that's the part we don't wanna do. Take up your cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. <laughs> and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what profit a man if he will gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? 
For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. He shall reward every man according to his works. It's your choice. It's your choice. Just like you choose to marry somebody, you go into a marriage covenant, you go and tell your spouse that you love them, and I give myself to you. And then turn around and say, don't ask me for anything. Don't tell me what to do, don't touch me. Some parts of that covenant don't apply to me. That's why some people rewrite the vows. They want, they want to do things selfishly in their way and call themselves in a marriage covenant. What kind of double talk is that? Either it's all or nothing. As so with the covenant that you have with the Lord. You can't tell the Lord, I'm going to give my life to you, but I still want to get sloppy, drunk, get high, have sex outside of marriage, cuss out anybody who says something to me that I don't like, and I don't want you to say or anybody else to say anything to me because God loves me and I'm under grace. Hello? Yeah. Romans 6, 1 to 4 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. The newness of life. Where is the sacrifice? There are no exceptions, family. This isn't Burger King. We can't have it our way. It's his way. And I'm not going to say the highway. It's his way or the low way. Because hell is the low way. Revelations 3, 15 and 16 says, you ain't fooling nobody. I know all the things you do. That you are neither hot or cold. And I wish that you were either one or the other. And since you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You understand that? Matthew 12 and 30 says, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. You can't be in the middle. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Where is the sacrifice? We can't say we live in by his word and decide, I don't like this part, so I'm not gonna follow it. I like this part, you know, and really it doesn't make a difference whether I do this or not because he loves me. No, 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 this person is double-minded and unstable and doesn't really want to sacrifice. James 1, 6 8 says, he was speaking um, and telling them when they were asking God about wisdom but this scripture applies to anything that you ask God for. It says, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver. For a person with divided loyalty is an unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. You're on the fence between God and the world, and you are unstable in everything that you do. We are talking about what are you willing to sacrifice for eternal life with the Lord? What are you willing to sacrifice? Hebrews 6 and 11 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, we must trust and believe God, and in everything we do, our mindset should be to please God. We should highly value what we're doing. 
We should take delight in sacrificing to him. We should do it with everything that is within us, with all of our might, all diligence. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, and you seek me and find me when you so search for me with all of your heart. You can't give part, all of your heart. Because if your heart is wanting to do all the same things that you did when you were in the world, which was against God, you're not willing to sacrifice. There is no room for him. You're doing all that, there's no room for him. You have that room filled up with the people and the things that are your God. And he's not your God, those people and those things are your God. And Exodus warns us in 34 and 14, he says, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. So if we desire him, this is what he says we should be doing in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the things on this earth. This earth is temple. Talking about sacrifice. So we need to ask ourselves, are those things and those people that I'm sacrificing for more valuable to me than Jesus and what he tells me to do in his word? The one who came and lived and died, rose from the grave and conquered death with all power of heaven and earth and hell in his hands just for us. He did that just for us. He didn't have to, he willingly did that because he loved us with an everlasting, unconditional agape love so that we might have a right to escape the wrath of God that's coming on the children of disobedience, but rather receive eternal life. Do we think that it was easy what he did for the whole world? No, it wasn't easy. Even though he was fully God and fully man, in Matthew 26 and 39, it says he went a little further, fell on his face and prayed and said, Oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will be done. Will you sacrifice your will for his? Are we willing to do as Moses did in Hebrew 25 and 26, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasure in Egypt or this world. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You see, the pleasure of sin is fleeting, meaning it's only, it only lasts for a short time, temporal. If you live a hundred years, that's temporal. But the reward of sin is death and eternal punishment. But our reward for being a part of God's army is eternal life with him. So what will we choose? What are we gonna choose today? God has told us the best thing to choose. Will you believe him? He told us in Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and cursings. Now I call heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants may live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself totally, totally, totally to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Will we choose to totally sacrifice our lives for him? Or will we ignore the sacrifice he made for us to inherit eternal life because we'd rather enjoy the pleasure of sin 
for a short time, just a small time, and die and go to eternal hell. Proverbs 14, uh, 14 and 12 tells us there is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Everything seems okay. You know, I told y'all the last time I preached the devil, he takes a little bit of truth, mix it with a bunch of lies. And if you are not seeking God with your whole heart, you're going to grab onto them lies. But if you're seeking God with your whole heart, it's going to be something there to say, ah, that ain't quite right. I'm going to go search it out for myself. Just like you search everything else out that you want for yourself. He's there. He's, he's just waiting on you to come. He's standing there waiting on you to come. Well, I hear somebody today say, ah, I don't believe none of that old mess. Okay. If you're right, then nothing happens, right? But what if you're wrong and his word is right? Are you going to chance living in an eternal hell. Just think about that. Everybody thinks they got their truth, but there's only one truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Anything that brings you good in your life is a sacrifice. Think about it. We sacrifice our time and our energy to go to work so we can provide for ourselves and for our families. And you don't always want to get up and go to work. Sometimes you're tired, you're sick, going through things. And neither do you want to do what your boss tells you to do all the time. But you sacrifice and do it. Why do you do it? Also, you're there on time which you always late for church, but you're there all the time. You go to that job on time. You do it because you're going to get paid. Sometimes I myself struggle coming in here for a 6 o'clock service. I'm tired sometimes. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. I might be going through something. But I'm telling you, oh, am I blessed and rewarded for making that sacrifice to come. Those of you that were here last week know the Holy Spirit came and blessed us and healing and deliverance came, and light and refreshing and many more things came because we made that press for six o'clock service. Usually it's pretty empty in here. Everybody, I gotta go to work in the morning, I can't come back. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? You see, they go to work because they're going to get paid. There's also pay that you can't even imagine for what you choose to sacrifice concerning your soul. Either way, if you want to live life your way, or if you choose to live it God's way, Romans 6 and 23, everybody should know that says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. I beg of you, take the free gift. Take that free gift. On this day, Palm Sunday, that Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and then a few days later sacrificed his life for the whole world. Whole world! Can you imagine the pain and the agony? Oh my God, I can't, I can't even really fathom it in my mind what he was feeling. Will you today Consider accepting that sacrifice, that gift that he gave us by coming to this altar today and sacrificing your life for him and making your triumphant entry into his kingdom today to become one of his kings and one of his priests. And as you enter, we will wave our banners high, praising him for what he has done for you and for us for the sacrifice. Some of you might want to come today and renew your covenant that you have with him and start all over. Because sometimes we get sidetracked and we, we get on those demonic schedules and we think other things are more important than coming in to the house of God, to, than reading his word than taking time to sit and pray or taking time to let him speak to you. 
You don't always got to talk. Be quiet sometimes so he can speak to you. Don't let anything interrupt that private time. Turn your phone off. Put the tablets away. Somebody knock on the door, if it's important, they're going to come back. Give that time to the Lord. He's given everything for you. Can you just give him a little bit of time? Jesus told him, can't you just pray with me for an hour? They fell asleep. All that God has done for us, this is not it. This is a traveling place. We're going through here. We're passing through, making our decision where eternity is going to be. It's a serious thing. It's time to stop halfway doing things and thinking the Lord is going to accept that type of sacrifice. He wants all of you. He wants all of you today. Nothing less. So, are you willing to sacrifice today? Those are all of the words that the Lord had given me, and I'm I'm going to pray as we ask the altar workers to come. Think about what it is that you're not sacrificing to God, that you're holding back, that you're cherishing, thinking that it's good. It's not going to help you when you're on your dying bed. It's not going to help you. Time is very short, and I know you've been hearing that all your life, but time for you could be the next second, could be the next minute, next hour, even if somebody lives 100 years after you. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. And I know y'all hear me repeat myself, it's because it's in my heart and I mean it. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Let us do some real soul searching within ourselves today. Are we going to be totally sacrificed to God? Or are we going to haphazardly give him what we think is something that we really don't even desire ourselves? Are we going to sacrifice to him today? Even you've been a Christian for 30 years, and now all of a sudden, you just kind of slowly went sideways. God still loves you. He loves us so much. This is why he hasn't came yet. Because he loves the world. He loves them so much. He's given them time after time. I know he gave me time. He was long suffering with this one right here. Time after time after time. Here I'm 64 years old and beginning my journey three years ago to uh, accept the call four years ago in June. But I praise God for his love toward us. You know, most people, you, you keep doing stuff they don't like, they done with you. They ain't got nothing else to do with you. But God is not like that. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today for your sacrifice that you came to make on Calvary's cross. We thank you, God, that you didn't come down from that cross, God, and Thank you, God, that you rose up out of that grave, God, with all power, heaven, earth, hell in your hand, God. We thank you, God, for your shed blood on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah, that we would have a right. Where would we be without you, God? We're nothing without you. Within you, we have our movement and our being. We can do nothing without you. us and leading and guiding us into all truths. Thank you for your love toward us. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God, for all the things that we have done that was not like you. God, forgive us for being lazy, God. Forgive us, God, for getting about the sacrifice that you made for us on Calvary's cross, God. Have mercy, Jesus. Help us, God, to walk in your will and your way, God. Lest we should not forget you when you've given us all these material things that are occupying our time and taking us away from you, God. Help us to prioritize our life, God, in the name of Jesus. 
that we might represent you well in this dying, evil world, God. I thank you and I praise you today, Lord. Let the words, Lord, that you gave me to speak to your people resonate in their heart today, God, in the name of Jesus. That they may want to be even more dedicated if they're already dedicated unto you. They may want to share these words with someone that they see, Lord, that's slacking today. We all need you, God. We all need you every minute, every second of the hour, God. We need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. We just thank you and praise you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.com. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.